Right now, live at 5, we're getting a better idea of what Minneapolis's public safety system would look like after promises to dismantle the police department. Remembering Everett, tonight we learn who he was. Coming up, we hear from Duluth Police Chief Mike Tuscan as he provides updates on policing in Duluth. And school may be out for the summer, but the Duluth School District is still making sure students don't go hungry. You're watching Live at 5 on Live Local CBS 3. Welcome into the CBS 3 News Live at 5. You are looking live at Duluth City Hall, where city councilors are in the middle of the last round of interviews to fill an open council, open council seat. The three remaining candidates are Teresa Tominick, Jeff, uh, Jennifer Voss and Jules Rude, and Zach Radzak. They were chosen from a field of 19 last week. Tonight, the council will vote on a final candidate. That person will replace former councilor Barb Russ, who stepped down for health reasons earlier this year. We will have the latest tonight at 10. City leaders are also still interviewing candidates for the open city attorney position. They have not yet named finalists. Good evening, I'm Anthony Matt. The police department, trans police department transparency. The Duluth Police Department is hoping to inspire future conversations about change by laying out their current practices and policies for the community. This comes as many across the nation are questioning how police respond to calls, especially involving people of color. CBS 3's John Cardinelli joins us live from outside Duluth's public safety building. John, what did Chief Tuscan have to say today? Tony, Chief Tuscan had a meeting today to address the policies that are currently a part of the Duluth Police Department so that further discussion can be had to ensure that everyone in the community feels safe. Chief T Mike Tuscan addressed an array of his department's policies today, a major one being the use of force policy. Chief Tuscan said on Friday the department signed on to the Obama pledge, which calls for police departments to review the use of force policy. Tuscan said the department has trained its officers to use de-escalation tactics before resorting to use of force. He said they also plan to hold another de-escalation training soon. Tuscan also mentioned that prior to signing the Obama policy, the department has banned stranglehold and chokehold maneuvers as they are viewed as deadly force. Each time an officer resorts to using force, Tuscan says it must be documented. Every use of force must be, uh, must be reported. Um, and it is reported into a database. With that database, we can look at officers who use more force or less force, what types of force, what is the most common types of force. Um, and so we're able to take all that data and take a look at it to see what are our trends. Chief Tuscan also mentioned that currently every officer must complete a mental health check on a yearly basis to assure they are mentally fit to protect and serve. And Tuscan says that many of these policies were adopted due to discussions between the Citizens Review Board. The board serves as a voice between the community and the department as well as the city of Duluth. And John, we know the police department obviously hires new officers every year. What steps does the department take to teach them the policies and beliefs? So, Tony, the department hires new officers based on a character-based hiring process in which the morals and ideals of the officers are really looked into before they are confirmed to move forward with moving in the police department. CBS 3's John Cardinelli live for us tonight. Thanks, John. And coming up tonight at 10, Chief Tuscan addresses the Minneapolis City Council's intent to defund the Minneapolis Police Department and if he thinks that could ever be a possibility here in Duluth. Meanwhile, we reached out to police departments in the Twin Ports to see if law enforcement responding to protests or any large gatherings are getting tested for COVID-19. A spokesperson for the Duluth Police Department says the Minnesota Department of Health updated testing guidelines for first responders at the beginning of the month. That update means Duluth officers sent to large gatherings who believe they were exposed to COVID-19 can get tested even if they aren't showing symptoms, according to the spokesperson. As for Superior Police, they're not requiring COVID-19 testing, but if an officer wants to be tested, whether they have symptoms or not, the department refers them to an e-visit with a doctor first who makes the call on testing. This week was supposed to look a lot different at a memorial in downtown Duluth. 100 years ago, on June 15, 1920, Elias Clayton, Elmer Jackson, and Isaac McGee, three African-American men, were lynched on the streets of downtown Duluth. It was in response to a white woman's unfounded rape allegation. The organizers of a Memorial Day of Remembrance hope to have more than 10,000 people march this week in their honor, 
before the COVID-19 pandemic forced them to change plans. Instead, they are now hosting a number of virtual and smaller events this week to commemorate the 100th year since the lynchings. That was a live look at one of those events happening right now, a mural painting of George Floyd. The mural will eventually be displayed near the Clayton Jackson and McGee Memorial. We'll hear from organizers coming up tonight at 10. Exactly two weeks after the death of George Floyd, the majority of city council members in Minneapolis have promised to dismantle the city's police department and replace it with a new system of public safety. It follows a weekend of massive, peaceful rallies demanding real change on the issue of race and policing. Jeff Begay's reports from Minneapolis, where the mayor of the town is pushing back. We are here because in Minneapolis and in cities across the United States, it is clear that our system of policing is not keeping our communities safe. That's Minneapolis City Council President Lisa Bender. She is leading the charge to defund or eliminate and replace the city's police department after George Floyd was killed. Our commitment is to end our city's toxic relationship with the Minneapolis to Police Department. George Floyd! George Floyd! There are calls to rethink policing in cities around the country. Following a similar move by the mayor of Los Angeles, New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio vowed to cut funding to the police department and divert it to social services and youth initiatives. We will only do it in a way that we are certain continues to ensure that this city will be safe. But the pledge going the furthest so far is in Minneapolis. Before the city council can defund the department, they need to have a plan for a new system in place, something they admittedly don't have yet. The mayor could then veto that vote, and the city council can override that decision with a two-thirds majority. When asked if he would consider defunding the department, Minneapolis Mayor Jacob Fry ruled it out. On Saturday, protesters booed him. Fry says he considers police reforms to be a better option. If you're asking whether I'm for massive structural reform to revise a, struct a structurally racist system, the answer is yes. If the city council does pass the law, the state could intervene and stop it, but for now it's unclear if it'll even get to that point. It has happened, though, most recently, eight years ago in Camden, New Jersey. The city replaced its entire police department, and it became countywide thereafter. Meanwhile, mourners are able to view George Floyd's casket Monday in his hometown of Houston, the final stop of a series of memorials in his honor. A six-hour viewing is being held right now at the Fountain of Praise Church, in southwest Houston. The viewing is open to the public, though visitors will be required to wear a mask and gloves to comply with coronavirus-related guidelines. Floyd's funeral will be Tuesday. We'll broadcast it right here on CBS3. It will be followed by a burial at the Houston Memorial Garden Cemetery in suburban Perland, where he will be laid to rest next to his mother, Larcina Floyd. Meanwhile, a judge has increased bail to $1 million for the former Minneapolis police officer charged with second-degree murder in Floyd's death. Derek Chauvin said almost nothing during an 11-minute hearing today. He appeared on closed-circuit TV from the state's maximum security prison in Oak Park Heights. His attorney did not challenge the bail amount, which is now higher than the 500000 initially set in the case. Chauvin's attorney also didn't address the substance of the second-degree murder charges or speak with reporters afterwards. Chauvin's next appearance is set for June 29th. All right, Dave joins us for a quick look at the weather. Dave, it was cool here in Duluth today. Yeah, while up over the hill we were getting into the 80s, even yeah. 90s, a lot of towns in Wisconsin cracked that 90 degree mark, which doesn't happen around here very often. So that's a lot of heat, a fair amount of humidity, all that can be converted into storms. And the biggest threat tonight is in northwestern Minnesota. Right now there actually is a storm warning going on just west of Grand Forks. There's a slight chance some of that activity could creep towards International Falls tonight. Otherwise, I think most of us are off the storm hook until tomorrow and we could get the double whammy regular low pressure system coming in from the west we also have the remnants then of tropical storm christabel coming up from the south the two of them colliding over our region is going to con or result in a soaking rain tuesday night in through wednesday so our day planner for tuesday says you probably will start the day on a sunny note but clouds will increase as the day goes on. Duluth High tomorrow will be around 78, but it could be warmer inland once again. And coming back home tomorrow night, 40% rain chance in a few hours could give way to a 90% shot. And I'll talk about how much could come down with the latest rain estimate charts in a few more minutes.
Thanks, Dave. Still to come on Live at 5, Duluth Parks and Rec wants your feedback on upcoming improvements to Piedmont Park. Plus, it's picnic season at the Shawamigan National Forest. City by City is next. Plus, tonight at 6, we're hearing from those who knew the young boy who died last week in Lake Superior. You're watching Live at 5 with Kristen Vockey, Anthony Matt, and weather with meteorologist Dave Anderson on Live Local CBS 3. Catch Eye on Parenting every Thursday at 6 with me, Leanne Valdez on CBS 3. Hi, I'm Dr. Charity Reynolds. I would like to remind you that COVID-19 is still around. Remember to wash your hands, wear your mask, and stay home as much as possible. Thank you. We want to say thank you. Thank you. To the first responders. Thank you. To the truck drivers. And delivery people. Thank you. Thank you to the doctors, the nurses, and all the hospital workers, the grocery store workers, the janitors, and sanitation workers. Show them kindness, patience, and gratitude. They are the real heroes. Thank you for all of your bravery and hard work. Thank you all. Powerful change occurs when people unite. We unite people to activate positive change to make lives better. Help us fight for what's right for all. Basic needs, access to health care, a good education, and financial stability. There's strength in numbers. Join us and live united. HLUnitedWay.org most excited about getting to really know the viewers in the Northland and getting to show my personality too and letting the Northland kind of get to know me. I'm a very energetic person. I'm always at 100 and I'm always excited to be able to tell stories and being able to have a little bit of fun with it too and I think that's really really important on a morning show as well because you need that energy in the morning to wake you up. Wake up with Austin and Jenna at 5 a.m. I don't believe there's another meteorologist in this area who has the experience and years that Dave has. He's an Ely guy, he's local, he's been here. His experience, that's something that's really special to CBS3. He, he's just like this bastion of knowledge. He remembers everything. Get to know Dave Anderson weekday nights on live local CBS3. Here is a live look over Lake Superior, where it's a little bit of a cool day here in Duluth. Dave Anderson will have more coming up in your full weather forecast, but first, let's see what's happening around the region. Improvements are coming to Piedmont Park, and the city wants you to weigh in. Plus, picnics are back at, a nat on an, uh, on, at National Forest in Wisconsin. That and more as we take you around the Northland, city by city. The Duluth Parks and Rec Department is hosting a virtual meeting to discuss improvements to Piedmont Park. That meeting is scheduled to be held this Thursday from 5 to 6 p.m. Additional pathways and wetland management will be among the proposed improvements to the park. The community is invited to attend the virtual meeting and can attend by visiting DuluthMN.org. And picnic areas are now open at the Shawamigan Nicolay National Forest. The forest joins other national park areas in the process of reopening following shutdowns to prevent the spread of COVID-19. The camping areas are currently open on a first-come, first-served basis. And the Ashland Northern State Bank is giving back to the community in the form of $20,000 worth of grant money for local nonprofits. The money was distributed among five area nonprofits, including the Big Top Chautauqua. The grants are, uh, are a response to the economic impact of COVID-19. If there is something going on in your neighborhood that you think we should know about, go ahead and send us an email and it might be featured as we go around the Northland city by city. Still to come on Live at 5, if Ely's Peak was on your list of hiking locations this summer, then stay tuned because some major changes could impact your route. Here's a live look up north at the woods near Effie and the sky above Effie. You can see cumulonimbus clouds brewing up from the heat of the day. Will they turn into storm pack and cumulonimbus clouds tonight? I'll talk about the odds coming up after this break. Find your favorite CW shows on the Duluth CW, cable, satellite, over the air, and streaming on KDLH Duluth. Here's the deal. Your mother and I have decided we're going to give you our van. That way you won't have to call for the bus. 
Oh, that sure is nice of you, but no thanks. You're kidding. You're kidding. Arrowhead Transit. It, it works, works for us. us. To set up your ride, simply call and tell the dispatcher where you need to be picked up, where you need to go, and when you need to get there. Call 800-862-0175. I'm Jay, and I'm into CNC programming. I have a four-year degree. I worked at a job for 25 years, and I decided it was time to reinvent myself. One of the unique things about Lake Spirit College is it, it affords you the opportunity to get job placement immediately. Stop by your local Super One Liquor for all your party and gathering needs. With locations throughout the Northland and northern Wisconsin, Super One Liquor has a commitment to delivering outstanding service, variety, and top quality wines and spirits. And don't forget the massive variety of ice cold beer and beverages, all at the low prices you've grown to expect. Visit SuperOneLiquor.com anytime to view our weekly ads and in-store specials. So stop by your local Super One Liquor store. Come for the service. Leave with the savings. When breaking news happened in your neighborhood, CBS3 was there. They came out to stand up against racial inequality and demand that more is done. The Duluth Police Department forced to make arrests and deploy tear gas as protests began to get out of hand in the early morning hours. For coverage that matters most to you, tune to CBS3. The 2020 Yamaha XTR editions at RJ Sport and Cycle. We are strong and we'll get through this together, but these are stressful times. Reach out to someone, connect with your friends, and know that you are not alone. Visit wearebroadcasters.com slash hope. Furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. CBS 3 Weather is brought to you by Jim Peralt. Now, the CBS3 Duluth Weathermax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. We're entering a rainy period, and some towns tasted a little bit of that late last night through early this morning, especially in the arrowhead of Minnesota, where International Falls already received close to a half inch of rain, about a tenth for the folks in Hibbing. There's a couple more rounds coming across through the next couple of days, and these rain totals likely will go up. For International Falls, it could happen again as early as tonight. For the rest of us, we may put off plans for precipitation until tomorrow afternoon about this time. All right, current conditions at the airport. We talked about those before we look at our storm chances here, and it's 77 degrees at the airport in Duluth, and that's not too bad. Otherwise, inland towns were going from 80 to even 90 degrees, so warm and humid. Southeast wind, it's going 8 miles per hour, air pressure 1,006 millibars, and current temperatures, there we go, 90 in Waters Meat and Ironwood, 91 Hayward, 90 Solon Springs, 93 degrees in Ashland, cooler by the lake, not helping them out much, but it looks like Red Cliff is doing all right with a cool zone there, and look at Superior, cooler by the lake today. Only 58 degrees, 52 on Park Point, but 75 Silver Bay, 82 for the Iron Ranges from the Vermilion to the Mesabi to 83 in Grand Rapids, and 80 right now in International Falls. Come tomorrow, I don't know if the 90s are going to pop back again, but temperature regimes could push inland towns back into the 80s once again. That's a lot of moisture and a lot of heat energy for lift, and so the combination of that with a couple of lows is indeed going to create a good chance for a soaking rain. Right now we do have those showers and storms trying to creep towards Lake of the Woods and two international falls. The folks there again could get some showers and potentially severe thunderstorms tonight while the rest of us hold off until tomorrow. The double whammy coming our way. A regular extra tropical low pressure system coming in from the west, extra in this case meaning outside of. And here's a straight up real tropical system down here. The remnants of Cristobal come on our way for tomorrow. The two converge over our region and that could lead to rain totals that might look like this by the end of Tuesday. Half inch for a lot of towns in Minnesota, maybe a quarter inch or so in Wisconsin and Michigan. But that's not all folks. Still happens on Wednesday, and by the time all is said and done, could be in the two to even three inch range in Wisconsin, an inch or so for Minnesota. So we needed rain to knock off the fire danger. Hopefully we don't get so much that we now trade that in for flooding problems. We'll keep an eye on it over the next couple of days, of course. Tonight, Minnesota forecast, it's a warm one away from the lake. 50s by the lake, but... 60s inland. Partly cloudy for most of us, but again, storms are possible creeping towards International Falls. A precursor to tomorrow's activities. Wisconsin, Michigan tonight, partly cloudy sky. Low temps go from 55 inches superior to 68 degrees towards Ironwood. Wow, warm and muggy one probably. Highs tomorrow in Wisconsin, Michigan. A stripe of 70 right by the lake, 82 to 87 farther inland. 60% chance for afternoon and evening storms for that zone. 
it's a 40% chance in Minnesota with 60s by the lake and 76 to 83 inland. Well, the 40 to 60% rain chance becomes a 90% shot on Wednesday. And that cloud cover will take temperatures down, Tony, back into the 60s for Wednesday and Thursday. And by Friday, we shake off the rain chance, but hold on to the 60s through at least the first half of the weekend, finishing with sunshine and near 70 by next Sunday. Okay, it sure felt like we were in like a snow globe of sorts over this weekend, looking around at everyone in the 80s and 90s, mm -hmm. and we're struggling to stay in the 60s. <laughs> For those of us who uh, don't enjoy heat or humidity, yeah. the cooler by the lake syndrome really paid off for sure us. Sure did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. A popular hiking destination in Duluth remains closed due to falling rocks. As of about three weeks ago, the trail was closed so crews could remove loose rock near the tunnel at Ely's Peak. Signs have been posted leading up to the tunnel, and city officials say other routes are available. The closure is expected to last through mid-June. Tonight, we're hearing from those who knew the young boy who died last week in Lake Superior. Six-year-old Everett Eastvold and his family were wading in calm, waist-deep water on the South Shore Wednesday, when authorities say he encountered a drop-off. Crews spent hours searching, but found Everett's body later that night. CBS 3's Leon Valdez shares how his classmates and community came together today to remember him. Six-year-old Everett Eastfold went to Duluth's Homecraft Elementary School, where today many came together to share his memories. Everett's classmates, their families, and community members gathered at Homecraft to celebrate his life in different ways. Children were able to play with chalk, drop off cards, write their favorite memories of Everett in a book that will later be given to the family, and paint rocks that will go around a blueberry patch the class will be planting in his memory. Community members also dropped off donations for his family. Giving them a chance to, to be with family and um, not have... Uh, not have people knocking at their door. We're giving uh, folks a chance to drop things off here today as part of the Homecraft community that we'll, uh, we'll deliver to them. Thanks, Leanne. A visitation and funeral was planned for this week, but Everett's mother just informed us it has been postponed. The family plans to share more details as soon as they are able. Coming up tonight at 6, we'll hear more about Everett from those who knew him. So the come how the Duluth School District is making sure no kids go hungry this summer. The Garage, it's your space. Get a garage fit for all of your agricultural needs with our Farmer 40 by 40 Garage. Store all the equipment needed to get the job done. No matter what you put in your space, trust us to build it right. Economy Garages, built right, priced right. Thank you for virtual family dinners and long-distance birthday wishes. Thank you for sweet streaming melodies and spontaneous dance parties. Thank you for keeping classrooms together and learning alive. Thank you to our incredible network of employees who make all these beautiful connections possible. We dance for healing. We dance for one another. For connection. In ways like no other. Together or even apart. We are resilient. We are resilient. The 2020 census is here, and we need to do our part for our people. I'm Jim from Jim for All Construction, a certified TAMCO contractor. What does that mean for you? TAMCO's full line of roofing and decking products allow me to offer the best options to homeowners. The average contractor can only offer 10 years. At Pro Construction, we provide a full coverage, 15-year labor and material warranty on residential and commercial buildings. Nobody can offer a better warranty than this. Give us a call today to find out what Jim Pro Construction and Tamco can do for you. Feel like getting back out there? Nissan is ready to help you with a bold, award-winning lineup and great offers. Kick off summer with no payments for three months. Plus, we'll cover your payments for up to two more months. Or get 0% financing on 13 models for up to 84 months. 
Mariah Haberman here from Discover Wisconsin. Join me and the rest of the DW crew every week on this station for all things Wisconsin. Continue the adventure on social media and discoverwisconsin.com for behind-the-scenes content and great Wisconsin giveaways, including a chance to win a free vacation. This week's featured prize package could take you to Baraboo. Just visit discoverwisconsin.com for details. I'm Dr. Carolyn Phelps, licensed psychologist. In the wake of this pandemic, many of us are feeling overchallenged and overwhelmed. If you or someone you care about is struggling with anxiety, depression, or any other mental health problem, please know this, getting help matters. Mental health care is essential care and it's still available. Simply contact a local mental health care provider yourself or ask someone you trust whom they'd recommend. Now more than ever, reach out for help. School may be out for the summer, but the Duluth School District is still making sure no students go hungry. The district will hand out free breakfast and lunches throughout the summer. Or MacArthur Elementary School is one of eight pickup sites. A school bus will also make daily deliveries in several other neighborhoods. The school district started distributing free meals during the pandemic to make sure students who counted on it during the school year would not go hungry. Volunteer Mark Talbot knows these are challenging times for everyone, and he knows it goes a long way. Some of these parents, are, they're at home and they don't have a job presently because of the COVID going on and um, it gives them an alternative to be able to come get two stable meals at least for the kids and then the parents uh, have less to worry about. Any Duluth School District students are eligible. The meals will be handed out every day from 11 a.m. through 1230. You can check out our website for pickup locations. A heads up to drivers in downtown Duluth. Part of the 300 block of West 1st Street will be closed from 6.30 to 10.30 tomorrow morning. Crews will be replacing an underground transformer. Eastern half of the block will have two-way traffic and the sidewalk in front of the CenturyLink building will be closed. Coming up on the CBS Evening News, we're in Houston tonight where thousands of mourners have gathered here at this church to pay respects to George Floyd as Officer Derek Chauvin appeared in court in Minnesota. Plus a CBS News exclusive, we sit down with Democratic nominee for President Joe Biden after his meeting with the Floyd family. And how a wall blocking protesters from the White House has become a tribute and a call to action for those demanding change. That's all tonight here on the CBS Evening News. Find your favorite CW shows on the Duluth CW. Cable, satellite, over the air, and streaming on KDLH Duluth. How to change the way you pizza. Step one, grab a delicious Papa Murphy's pizza. Step two, bake. Step three, chow down on the deliciousness. Right now, get the cheeseburger pizza for just $10. Papa Murphy's. Hello, I'm Steve Little, owner of Bath Planet. I want to thank you for allowing us to serve you these last two decades. Safety is our top priority, so our workers are following all CDC guidelines to ensure the safety of both our customers and employees. Our showroom is currently closed with a flexible reopen date. Our company is doing everything we can to keep our customers and employees safe during this time. We're excited to let you know that we've extended our offer of zero down, zero interest, and zero payments for two years on all our products. So you can get the work done now and not have to pay for it until 2022. This offer now goes through June 30th. So call us today or go online to book your appointment to take advantage of this amazing offer. We will also give you a $25 gift card to a locally owned restaurant with every new appointment to show our support for other local businesses. On behalf of everybody here at Bath Planet, we look forward to serving you soon. Thank you. Watch Anthony Mann weekdays at 6 and 10 p.m. on live local CBS3 Duluth. When breaking news happened in your neighborhood, CBS3 was there. They came out to stand up against racial inequality and demand that more is done. Now, there are protesters on both sides, both northbound and southbound I-35. Duluth Police Department forced to make arrests and deploy tear gas as protests began to get out of hand in the early morning hours. We're interrupting your normal programming this evening to hear from Minnesota Governor Tim Walz. For coverage that matters most to you, tune to CBS3. Find your favorite CW shows on the Duluth CW. Cable, satellite, over the air, and streaming on KDLH Duluth. 
Welcome back. Here's a look back at our top stories from 5 and a look ahead at what's coming up at 6. The Duluth Police Department is hoping to inspire future conversations about change by laying out their current practices and policies for the communities. This comes as many across the nation are questioning how police respond to calls, especially involving people of color. Chief Mike Tuscan said the point of today's meeting was to address the Duluth Police Department's current policies so further discussions can happen that assures everyone in the community feels safe. Meanwhile, a popular hiking destination in Duluth remains closed due to falling rocks. As of about three weeks ago, the trail was closed so crews could remove loose rock near the tunnel at Ely's Peak. Signs have been posted leading up to the tunnel, and city officials say other routes are available. The closure is expected to last through mid-June. And coming up tonight at 6, classmates, teachers, and community members celebrate the six-year-old boy who died last week in Lake Superior. Six-year-old Everett Eastvolt and his family were waiting in calm, waist-deep water on the South Shore Wednesday when authorities say he encountered a drop-off. Crews spent hours searching but found Everett's body later that night. Tonight at 6, we're hearing from more from those who knew him. That's your news at 5. The CBS3 Evening News is next. We'll see you back here at 6. Thanks for watching.